Bari. Tetap dia. and welcome to another edition of On a Couch Talking Sports. As always, I'm Robbie. This is Kyle. Kyle, how are you tonight? Doing all right. You know, as, uh, as good as can be. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, guess what day it is, though. Uh, guess what day it is. Uh, Wednesday? Hump day! Hump day! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> throwback nice. to throwback commercial right there. <laughs> Great commercial. Guy well Camel. Well done. <laughs> um, they, I had to do it. You know, you just sometimes you just gotta get it drop in my paper. <laughs> so, um, speaking of history and throwbacks, <laughs> I'm, I'm mastered Great segues. Segue. Great segue. <laughs> um, we wanted to give you guys a little bit of a history lesson tonight. And what I mean by that is that we've decided to sort of start a little uh, series of shows here where we're going to sort of go over the history of sports. So each <laughs> episode, we're going to take a couple of sports. And so we go for the sort of the basic history of how that sport came to be, sort of some historical facts about the sport. Nothing too, you know, intricate or anything like that, but just sort of having some fun with a little bit of history of the sports that we love. And obviously, yeah, for my for myself at least, there's no better sport to start off with than baseball. And then we are also going to tonight uh, be discussing tennis. So we kind of mm -hmm. sort of research. One sport each. I obviously did baseball. Kyle did <laughs> Kyle did tennis, and we've got our factoids ready to go. So I'm actually going to uh, allow you, Kyle, oh, okay. to kick things <laughs> off. Even though there's no kicking in either of these sports, so the pun doesn't really work. Um, so what uh, what did you find out when you researched the lovely sport that is tennis? So I went on the Britannica online dictionary, mind Ooh, you. Ooh, very nice. To uh, find some I went really... on the Wikipedia. Nice. Not Got as, a wiki? Not, yeah, not as, not a, definitely not as fancy or formal <laughs> or anything of the sorts, but it worked. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. And before I actually talk about, I go d uh, deep into tennis, I did want to give a big shout out to our friend Jerome. Yes, yes, thank you. Good call. Whose wonderful idea this was, and I, yeah. I thought it was really cool, and you know, and like, and you, some of you might know Jerome if you have seen the the mini golf episode that we posted. Like, I think he's been on a couple of episodes, so. yeah, because he was on. We were talking about the Patriots and the mini, oh, yeah. the mini golf, and then he sort of had mm -hmm. a special guest cameo <laughs> at the end of one of our other episodes. So yeah, yeah that's right. He, we yeah, came so. in the yeah, yeah, came in the car too. Yeah, so uh, yeah, mm -hmm. shout out Jerome, a big, Ooh. big help. <laughs> Definitely gets a writer's cred for uh, for tonight's episode because yeah. he this was. All his idea. We're definitely going to have him on in a future episode to sort of help with one of these segments because, like I said, we really appreciate his brilliant idea for this. Oh yeah, episode. definitely. And honestly, if you guys have any ideas that you wanted to discuss, like if you wanted to, us to kind of look into some history of other sports that you know we haven't covered yet, then feel free to you know throw it out there. We can definitely you know, Google or not Google it. No one has Google Plus anymore. Um, what is it? If you want to throw it on YouTube, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter yeah. Instagram, the whole nine yards. <laughs> Definitely yeah, so. hit a, hit us up. Yeah, get hit us up, man. <laughs> All right, what 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 have you got, Kyle, for us tonight? So, Enlighten us about the world of tennis. So an interesting fact, a few interesting facts. It did. It's actually started. It originated kind of like the early version originated in Europe back in the 12th to 13th century. That's right oh, wow. around the time it started. Wow. Um, and actually, it started off in Britain, known as um, lawn tennis, and okay. which is actually still referred to it as as that in you know even today, uh, believe it or not. Um, that's like the older version of tennis. It kind of went through a few stages. Um, so and also, um, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, hold on. In the <laughs> sorry, when I meant the the twelfth of the first. Sorry, the twelfth of the it, it, it was originally in Britain. But it was actually in 12th to 13th century uh, France. Uh, oh. Sorry, I, I'm going to correct that. It was in France that okay. it, it originated, the very, very early version. And it was, it was a, technically, it was a French handball game called Jeu de Pomme, uh, which means Game of the Palm. So, Makes um, sense, yeah. Yeah. 
and then and then that's when um that's when it kind of like I think it, it seemed like it became um it kind of turned into um in into more of like it, it developed into like a, into lawn tennis uh, in Britain uh, essentially. Um, now correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. I mean I'm just doing with what I'm what I got over here in uh, the Britannica, but um but uh so yeah you know now it, the uh, it didn't. Uh, turn into mod the modern version actually until about the 60s or 70s and that's when they started the, like all the major champion championships and stuff like that and that's when people really took it seriously as like a sport you know that they can oh. compete in and stuff like that at uh, first people kind of they, they they took it more as like a spectator sport in the late 60s but then it uh it opened up more to like the professionals and the amateurs in um in in, in when the 70s happened so oh. Um, yeah, it really developed kind of more into like the tennis we know now in the 60s or 70s. So it's honestly not that uh, old of a sport. <laughs> I mean, the earlier version is, but the the newer version that we play that we see now is actually, if you think about it, it's actually even uh, more recent than sports like baseball. You know, which Robbie will get into more um, when it's uh, when it's his uh, segment there. But um, yeah, so um, and, and also uh, the. The uh, I, I guess tennis is one of the sports. It's kind of like golf, where there there is a lot of fashion that's kind of like associated <laughs> with it. <laughs> so a lot, a lot of people can uh, you know refer to it like tennis wear, um, and even and tennis balls uh, apparently um, are, they used to be just white, but then you know later on um, I believe in the seventies they were saying. Uh, you can actually turn it into different you can you can choose different colors or actually no I think it was maybe after the 70s I think it was more um, that's when like the yellow kind of tennis ball kind of took more into effect like it started off as white but then you could um, more pick your colors they kind of gave you like a sort of a fashion like <laughs> you know choice of colors there um, and yeah and uh, even the tennis rackets um, the you know they um, like they uh they, the, the, yeah, I can't even, sorry, I've had a long day. <laughs> I'm like stumbling on words. I, sorry. I talk I to do, preschool. I do it all. I do it all the time, so it's all good. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was mainly, mainly um they, they were they they introduced actually the metal frames of like the tennis racket in like '67, and then the oversized head they were saying in in '76. So, um, yeah, it was a uh, it's a very interesting sport. Um, it uh it's it's just like it's been a it's it's just one of those things that it's, it's just kind of like grown over the years like it started off as some as a kind of its own thing like a very early stage it's a um in the 13th century but then like you know later on like not till the 70s though um or actually hold on <laughs> uh, watch kyle here folks doing a little uh in show research uh yeah I just want to make sure I got all my facts right. So yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah. So I get. I guess also um, th there there actually has been dispute over the invention of modern tennis. Um, so they're saying that even though it they didn't rec it they it wasn't officially recognized until about seventy three. Um, um, I guess like Major Walter uh, Clopton introduced it in eighteen seventy three, which is like well. <laughs> So it's kind of one of those disputed history, like you know, history facts. Like you know, you could say that it started this this day, this time in the seventies, or in the nineteen seventies, or, the, or, or the 1870s. One, yeah. <laughs> so only a hundred year difference, no big deal. Yeah, right? no big, yeah, exactly. But you know, it was it was kind. Of, it, it looked like it was um it was it was started uh, in Britain. You know that that was where the earlier version yeah. of tennis started. That that was that that always we we knew that so. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much all the stuff that I think I got for now. Is there anything uh, you wanted to share for baseball? Or yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> uh, it's kind of interesting, actually, folks. A if you want to learn more about the history of tennis, quick little fun factoid: the mm -hmm. International Tennis Hall of Fame is actually in um, Newport, Rhode Island, so just about an hour's oh, drive gosh. from where we are right now. With all you new fellow New Englanders out there. Uh, you know, obviously right now it may not be the best time to go to the Tennis Hall of Fame, but, <laughs> you know, definitely at some point, you know, if you're if you're interested in learning more about tennis, definitely check that out. I've been, it's a really, it's a really cool place. So, uh, nice. yeah, so for baseball, um, baseball, apparently 
the references to baseball like globally, like around the world, uh, date back all the way to the 1700s. Wow. Uh, I guess in okay. England, there was a game called Rounders that many people believe sort of baseball was formed off of. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the late 1700s was when the first references to baseball started um, coming into the United States. Mm. Um, and they're actually, it's interesting you bring up sort of the controversy over the invention of tennis because there was also some controversy over the invention of baseball and sort of who invented it, especially here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then a, a commission was actually formed that debated for three years wow. on this very subject and then finally declared that Abner Doubleday uh, was the one who invented baseball here in the United States. And he actually, Cooperstown, New York, which is the home to um, the Baseball Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. Again, another great visit, you know, when it's definitely something for the bucket list. Again, I've been a very fun place. Um, he actually has a field in Cooperstown named after him, Double Day Field, right next door to oh, the Baseball okay. Hall of Fame. So nice. if you're ever in Cooperstown, check out the Hall of Fame and also check out Double Day Field. Very, uh, some very cool history there. Um, so apparently the first team to play under the modern rules of baseball uh, is believed at least to be the New York Knickerbockers starting in 1845. Oh, okay. Um, and the first professional league um, stateside here in, you know, in the U.S. was the National Association of Baseball Players, which ran from 1857 to 1870, which was then followed by the National Association of Professional Baseball Players. Um, which ran for a short time after that. And then Major League Baseball was officially formed in 1903. And it combined two different leagues, the National and American League of Professional Baseball Clubs, now just which are known as the American League and the National League. <laughs> um, so that's kind of how the, the NL and the AL kind of came to be, was that they were actually their own separate leagues and they kind of came together under the MLB umbrella in the early 1900s. Another, I mean, there's a lot of facts that you can, you know, go through with baseball for sure, just like mm -hmm. with tennis, I'm sure. But one of the other fun facts I wanted to mention is that um, baseball became integrated um, back in 1943, when, of oh, course, yeah. Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier when he mm -hmm. uh, joined the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, so it was very, uh, very big baseball piece of history there. Um, yes. but yeah, baseball obviously has evolved and changed throughout the years, much like with tennis and yep. sort of new kinks and all that have been added to the rules and to the game, uh, professionally and otherwise throughout the years. But yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that, uh, both these sports, I mean, started back, you know, in the 17, 1800s. I mean, they've mm -hmm. been around for a long time and continue to bring joy and fun to people of all ages everywhere. Yes, um, definitely. So, uh, yeah. So that's sort of what I got for baseball. So again, sort of our cool. first couple of sports that we're going to be sort of going over the history over. And again, we're going to be getting to more sports as the episodes go on very much looking forward to it um if you have a particular sport like cows were saying earlier if you have a particular sport that you'd really like us to focus on definitely let us know in the comments definitely. so we definitely would like to to hear about it but uh so we'll chat about it <laughs> exactly well we're, we're re we got our research caps on we're ready to go but uh we do want to move on to sort of the second slash end portion of our episode and uh mm -hmm. I'll start this week, and uh, I know the Robbie's favorite football recap, fantasy football recap, is done with for this season, but I am going to, for the next couple weeks at least, do a Robbie's NFL playoff football recap. Ooh. Obviously, the NFL playoffs uh, began this past weekend. A lot of exciting games. So I just want to mm -hmm. do a quick recap of who won, who's going home, and all that good stuff. Uh, nice. On the AFC side, the Buffalo Bills knocked off the Indianapolis Colts. Um, the Cleveland Browns pulled an upset, beating the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kind of a very a very surprising game there as the Browns moving on as a sixth seed. Hmm. Uh, overall, they move on to the next round. And then the 
in the third game in the AFC, the Baltimore Ravens also winning on the road. So two road teams won on the AFC side of things last weekend with the Ravens defeating the Titans in the 4-5 match. And meanwhile, on the um, NFC side, you had Tom Brady and the Buccaneers Oof. defeating the Washington football team. To, they advance <laughs> to the to the divisional round of the playoffs. You have um, the New Orleans Saints defeated the Chicago Bears. And then the LA Rams defeated the Seattle Seahawks. So it's very interesting. Like I said, four... Hmm. Um, in four out of the six games this weekend, the road team won, which was which was very surprising. Nice. Um, very so cool. now the teams will move on to the divisional round this weekend, where on the AFC side you will have the top seed Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Cleveland Browns, nice. and then you will have the Buffalo Bills hosting the Baltimore Ravens. On the NFC side, you've got the top seeded Packers taking on the. Um, Rams, and then you've got the uh, Saints hosting the Buccaneers. So, nice. some very intriguing matchups there, and uh, definitely looking forward to. And I'll definitely have the results of those games in next week's edition of Robbie's NFL Playoff Recap. But now cool. I want to toss it, tossing <laughs> ball, football punch, another <laughs> punch, dropping puns all over the place here. Uh, pff, yes. Um, to my good friend and co-host Kyle here with another edition of the Suze Reviews. Kyle, what have you got? All right, so quick side note. I, I'm just waiting for uh, the Washington football team. Is that what they're called now? The Washington football, football team. I'm just waiting yeah. for them to get a real name. Hopefully hopefully they'll find a real name. <laughs> I hope so. Be I Actually, hope so, yeah. That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, well. But um, anyway, so... I wanted this week to to round off the um, Prince of Persia series that I've been doing. So I've been reviewing a whole bunch of Prince of Persia games, great games, all amazing. And um, it is the last one that I'm going to talk about this, ta this time. It's called Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands. Now this game, first of all, kind of lives up to its name a little bit. Because it is a little bit forgettable, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um... Because it's one of those games where... Okay, so the Forgotten Sands takes place between... I don't know if you remember when I talked about the, the original Sands of Time trilogy that came out on the PlayStation, GameCube, original Xbox. Uh, sorry, PlayStation 2. Not the original PlayStation that couldn't run that. Um, but So that was a famous trilogy that, you know, it really innovated in, in platform gaming. And, like, you know, they, they you could turn back time using the Sands and stuff like that. Well, the Forgotten Sands is... A game that takes place between the first and second game. The first being Sands of Time, the second game being Warrior Within. And it's a game that it's pretty much just a reskin of the first game, the Sands of Time. So you're the prince, and you basically have to save the world from sand monsters again. And, you know, you have a brother. This time, the only difference of the story, though, is that instead of having to save your kingdom um, from this evil vizier, you have to kind of stop your brother from going power mad. He gets all kind of controlled by these, like, sand power demon things, and he eventually <laughs> becomes one himself. So, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, the story's okay, you know, also not super memorable, but it, it's, it's serviceable for the game. The game itself is, um, the graphics are really good. I really like the graphics, and they had some cool ideas for platforming. There are some new mechanics that they, where you could actually freeze the water, and you can like swing on the water while it's frozen. Um, so you can essentially stop time, which I thought was really cool. But outside of that, it really doesn't do much to differentiate itself from the other series. Um, it's, you know, you still go from area to area, you know, fighting enemies and jumping over them and, you know, going over platforms. And of course you can turn back time like in the other games, but that's really about it. You know, it's, it's not, it, it, it came out around the same time, um, <clears throat> it came out, I think in 2010, that was the last time, so it's kind of weird. It was about 11 years ago now that it came out, which kind of blows my mind. It was like yesterday. And um, it's, you know, it's it's a decent game. Um, I don't think it's a bad game. They really, you know, it's a very, like, serviceable game. It's it, it, the, the, game play, the gameplay mechanics work well. You can, you can see that they tested. There is one major glitch, though, I gotta warn you. If you're, and, and it happens about two-thirds of the way into the game, where you fall down, you're, you're, you have to kind of like swing on these like floating birds or something like that or whatever. And 
if you fall down, if you miss a jump, you're going to end up in this like kind of like dungeon like area and you have to kind of restart the game. You have to go back in the system and it's it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. It's a really bad glitch. You like you can't get out of it. <laughs> they they save you while you're in this like dungeon thing and it's like you can't escape the dungeon. So uh that's the only bad thing I have to say about the game. Otherwise, it's a solid game. It's it's okay. But, you know, it's not it's it's not gonna break it's not breaking the mold. So if you really want another Prince of Persia game, I say get it. If you want to just complete the collection, definitely get it. But if you're looking for something new, something very innovative, then it's okay. And mind you, it did come out the same year as the Prince of Persia movie, which I will probably talk about next week because oh boy, there's a lot to talk about that one. So uh, we're gonna have a fun time with that. So yeah, that's my uh, review, Prince of Persia, Forgotten Sands, Forgotten. Very good. Thank you, Kyle, as always, for that lovely review. And, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up this week's edition of On a Couch Talking Sports uh, from a Car. <laughs> um, thanks, as always, everybody, for tuning in. And, as always, he's Kyle. I'm Robbie, not the other way around. And, uh, yeah, we will see you next time here uh, from a car on On a Couch Talking Sports. Bye, everybody.